Hey, what's going on guys? Chris from Blu-ray Critic uh, doing a discussion video on Pierce Brosnan as the James Bond and four of the films that he played and starting off with 1995's GoldenEye and uh, this is a very soft picture quality image on this uh, release actually from the whole Bond 50 collection that was recently released uh, this was the worst uh, image as far as picture quality is concerned it's really soft I mean there's some scenes that slightly pop but overall it's about a three out of a five unfortunately but the audio is pretty decent it's about a four and a half out of five so uh, this was the first time we actually saw GoldenEye being released on Blu-ray because uh, it was never released it was only uh, World is Not Enough and Die Another Day those were the earlier releases on Blu-ray so it's nice to finally get this as a individual set as well of course uh, you can also get it in that big beautiful Bond 50 collection this contains a lot of special features, some of which are uh, audio commentary with the director Martin Campbell, who also directed Casino Royale. And you get a um, deleted scenes, 12 featurettes, including a storyboard sequence, GoldenEye music video, and the original theatrical trailers, TV spots, and image database. And the funny thing about the theatrical trailers, uh, <laughs> the picture quality on uh, the trailers look way better than the actual movie. <laughs> Uh, it's just as funny as it sounds, but it's true. So let's take a look inside. So just a simple disc right here. Uh, advertisement material comes in this eco case. And you can get these relatively uh, cheap. It's a pretty good deal. I mean, probably 10 bucks if you really look around, maybe 7 bucks, depending on where you get it from. But definitely give Golden Eye a try. Next up we have is... Uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, which was uh, released in 1997, around the time when Titanic was in theater, so it was going head to head, and Titanic uh, definitely left this one in, in the dust. But nonetheless, it was great to see Pierce Brosnan return the second time around as Agent 007, and I really like uh, Pierce Brosnan as 007. A lot of people criticize him, but he's not bad. It's just the scripts that weren't so great. GoldenEye was great, but this one was okay, but you can tell that the script wasn't as tight, and it was okay, but it just wasn't great, as I was saying. So, so this comes with a decent amount of special features as well. Also, Michelle Yeoh plays Bond Girl. Some of the features is the two audio commentaries with director Roger Spotswood, deleted and extended scenes, theatrical trailers, and image database, and much more. Music video with Cheryl Crow, and the. Uh, Anthem song for uh, the opening sequence, I actually didn't like it so much, you know, with the opening credits. I actually like the Tomorrow Never Dies uh, theme song towards the closing credits better. I, I wish they used that closing credits song as the intro song to Bond, but it, I mean, it's okay. But I don't know, that was just my uh, few cents on that. Let's take a look inside. Picture quality on this one is a little better than uh, GoldenEye. It's about a uh, 4 out of 5. So advertising material because you know what I mean uh, for other bond stuff so yeah simple eco case and uh, here's the simple disc itself but the for another bond film with Pierce Brosnan like I said it's pretty decent so next up we have is the world is not enough which was released in 1999 and this was okay for the first hour but then it kind of got too silly for my taste and uh, also stars of Sophia Marceau, you know, who was in Braveheart. And this girl right here, I keep forgetting her name. She was uh, once married to, uh, yeah, Denise Richards. She was once married to uh, Charlie Sheen. She's just a bad actress. I don't even know why she's even in this film. But uh, the guy who played the bad guy in this film, uh, Robert Carlyle, eh, he was kind of silly for a Bond villain. So this was the earlier release on uh, Blu-ray. So that's why you get a different uh, artwork right there. Simple advertisement material. Of course you could get this re-released again with different artwork. So that's why it's uh, different on here because it was uh, released I believe in 2008 when this was released. Picture quality up for this film is about a four, four and a half. Audio is about the same as well. So finally we had Die Another Day, which was released in 2002, the last film for Pierce Brosnan, and this film was really, really silly. The first hour or 45 minutes or so was good, then once they got to Iceland, everything went downhill from there. I mean, it was just really bad, really bad script. 
I mean, the the stunts, I mean, some of the special effects was just really, really bad. It was just almost like they put some uh, student who barely knows any special effects to work and said, okay, finish up the special effects, we'll use your work and we'll give you credit for the film. And that's how bad it turned out. It just looks really amateurish. I'm surprised they even approved that for a James Bond film. You think they would have, uh, you know, go a different path to get a quality, uh, you know, special effects going. I mean, 2002 is not that long ago if you really think about it. Special effects were pretty advanced at the time. So, this is actually a steelbook edition. It does contain a lot of special features, as does the uh, The World Is Not Enough, which as you can see here, audio commentary, um, you know, theatrical trailer, making of World Is Not Enough, deleted extended scenes, alternate endings. Same with this one, with Die Another Day. As you can see there, audio commentary with director Lee Tamaroni, Pierce Brosnan, image database, from script to screen, audio commentary, smart mini technology. Let's take a look inside. Just a simple disc itself right there. And that's Die Another Day. And I wish Pierce Brosnan had better script material, because if he did, he would have done a better job. But like I said, he's a decent Bond. He's probably my fourth favorite. Uh, Sean Connery, Daniel Craig, Roger Moore, Pierce Brosnan, Timothy Dalton, and finally George Lazenby are my favorites. But uh, yeah, if he had a better script, I think he would have played a better Bond. And uh, Pierce Brosnan was the original pick over Timothy Dalton in the 80s, but he was busy uh, filming Remington Steel. He was under contract, so he couldn't play Bond at the time. So that's why we saw him in his debut in GoldenEye. Otherwise, he would have played uh, his debut in The Living Daylight. So anyhow, thanks for checking out this discussion video for Pierce Brosnan at Agent 007, and I'll see you guys soon in one of my next videos. Take care.